Hi everyone, um, someone wanted me to talk to you about uh, me being diagnosed with lupus and what I went through. So, I was diagnosed with lupus at the age of 17. I was still a high school student. I was going through my senior year. I had a lot of stressed out moments that happened to me, you know. Um, that year caused me to be so stressed out that I caught a flare up. So I went to my primary doctor and they kept saying it was eczema because it was like a little rash. And I was laying on my back was hurting, but that was it. So they told me to use Neutrogena. Did I say it right? Fuck it. Neutrogena uh, eczema cream. That didn't go away. So I ended up um, going to a rheumatologist and he ran blood work. And two weeks later, I was diagnosed with lupus. Now, the doctor that diagnosed me with lupus was also my mother doctor. So... He told me that this is genetic with me. Uh, yeah, my mom, she does have lupus. And she found that she had hers, I think, around the age of 21 after she had all three of her kids. And she had miscarriages due to this. But I went, uh, okay, after I graduated high school, I moved to my first apartment in August, right after high school. And I was working two jobs, Taco Bell and Walmart, and going to school in New Orleans. I was going to Delgado. And I was sitting in my own apartment paying my own bills. I ended up getting overwhelmed and sick because I was going through stress. People were telling me stuff, how I wasn't good enough, how I wasn't pretty enough. And I took those insecurities and applied it to my life. And it didn't work out for me at all. So I ended up with my first kidney failure. The hospital kept sending me home for a UTI. And I kept telling them a UTI would not cause your face to get swollen to where you're very unrecognizable to your family and your friends. Um, I couldn't feel the sense of touch. I couldn't hold food in. Like, if I was eating, it'll run straight through me. So, like, while I'm eating, I will pull on myself. I will, if I feel like I have to go pee while I'm running to the bathroom, there's a trail of pee following me. Um, hot water didn't, I, I used to take a bath in all hot water and it wouldn't burn me. It will burn a person that's helping me take a bath, but it wouldn't burn me. And then, what else my husband did with the first kidney failure? Me and my husband, um, then I'll have real bad sweat episodes. And the sweat episodes will be like, literally, like, you know how somebody died, they take a chalk and imprint somebody's body, you know, on the ground. Yeah, mine was sweat. So, like, when I lifted up, you could actually see the sweat in my body. So, the third time they decided to send me home for the UTI, um, I ended up waking up the next morning. And I was sitting up sleeping. I was like, babe, it's, it didn't got worse. I really can't breathe. I can't breathe at all. So, I was like, babe, can you help me? So, my husband literally, you guys, had the, because I had no strength. He had to literally pick me up, drag me down, not drag me, but carry me down a flight of stairs, put me in the car. When I made it to the car, I was unresponsive. I wouldn't answer him. I would just shake my head yes and no, like, every odd time, just to let him know that I was still here. Like, I was still in my body. I'm not dead. And so, on the way to the hospital, he called my mom. And my mom said she was on her way. Now, when my mom stays at, she's two hours away from where I stayed at. My mom made it there within an hour, probably maybe less than an hour, 45 minutes. She, um, my husband sent her a picture of me, and that's what made her drive the fast. So when I made it to the hospital, you know, the ER doctor was telling me, um, you was here yesterday. And I said, yeah, yeah, you know, I shook my head, yeah. And he was like, I'm going to be honest with you, baby. I don't know what's wrong with you. I'm going to go get the admitting doctor from upstairs to come and take a look at you. That doctor from upstairs didn't know how my body was either. He didn't know what was going on with me, but he wanted to find out. So God blessed me with him. And I ended up getting admitted in the hospital. And around this first kidney failure, I was in there for like a month or two because they were trying to figure out whether it was the UV rays in the light bulbs or the sunlight, whether it was my lungs because I was unable to breathe and I started gaining fluid around my lungs. Or, you know, was it like my apartment, my surroundings? They had no idea it was my kidneys. So, um, one morning he came in and he was like, this is Dr. Stephen Morris with LSU. And he's an awesome doctor, you guys. This is Dr. Stephen Morris with LSU and he works with the kidneys. Well, I was like, well, what's wrong with my kidneys? My kidneys failing? And he said, I said, am I going to need a transplant? And he said, no, we're, we're about to see, we're about to see what's going to happen. We're going to do a kidney biopsy and... It should take about a week to come back or two, but we would love for you to stay in the hospital until then. And I wasn't feeling well, so I was okay with it. So I ended up staying, and I was in stage. They diagnosed me, I think, with stage 
before kidney failure the first time, I was on Imuran, prednisone. And then I told them that I really didn't have insurance, so they discontinued the Imuran. And there was like a program to where if you have low income, like you really, they mail you your medicine for free. Like Cellstep was mailing me my medicine for free through the mail. I just had to literally be there to sign it. And have to, and you have to, I had to call in two weeks before I ran out to make sure I was getting another one. So my body calmed down for like a year and a half or two. I ended up moving with my grandmother after my grandfather passed. And I was driving my car up the street off of Clearview, an airline, and a lady ran her light and hit me head on and totaled my car. By that time, you guys, my eye dropped literally in my face. My face was so swollen. And um, a month later, I started having other complications. Like, I started to gain real bad weight. This happened in 2016. This is my second kidney failure. I started to gain weight. I started to have blood clots coming out of random ways. Like, my, I would have a blood clot come out of my lip and my arm. And the doctors don't know how. Like, when they peel the blood clot off after dry, it's normal skin underneath. And that's really confused the ER doctors because, honestly, you guys, they are not experienced enough to understand what lupus patients go through. And so I ended up doing another kidney biopsy. And... It was like in the middle of stage four, they said. So I ended up starting to do chemo. And I had to do chemo because of the accident. I did rituximab chemotherapy. I was still taking cell steps. And now I was on Xarelto because I was prone to blood clots. I couldn't be on a contraceptive. I am on Lasartan because Lisinopril didn't work for me. Um, and I was on fluid pills. By the time my kidney doctor, Dr. Stephen Morris, saw me... In his regular office because this time my second kidney failure i actually had a lawyer and fought for medicaid and it took me a year it took me a full year and i don't understand how can somebody just deny somebody with kidney failure like how you deny that they're disabled and they're doing chemotherapy like you know what i'm saying internal stuff doesn't really show on the outside so when i came see him i went from that's when he switched to lasartan and he gave me a high dosage of furosemide Lasix. That's what Lasix is. And, um, y'all, he told me to come see him back in a week. When I came see him, I went from 185 to 120. And he was so happy. And this doctor that I had, he would pray with me before we go over my blood work. This man saved my life. I feel like he did. He's an awesome man, you guys. He's an awesome man. He was supposed to have surgery, you guys. Get this. Like, he was supposed to have surgery. And he called his surgery off because he wanted to make sure I was okay. So, it's like, don't ever think nobody's not going to help you or nobody's looking at you or nobody really cares for you because they do. Okay? Sometimes people tell you hurtful things to get you to understand that this is what you need to do. But he never told me hurtful things. He just always prayed for me. He prayed before we went over the blood work in the appointment. He prayed for me after. And ladies, it's no excuse for Louisiana for you not to go see him because he has two clinics. So I'm recommending him to you guys if you have kidney failure. He has two clinics, one in New Orleans that doesn't require insurance. It's like a clinic, and he, he deals with LSU, but he also works at Tulane. And get this, him and his wife are rheumatologists. So if you don't see him, please do go see his wife because I believe that they probably communicate with each other and come up with ideas. He was amazing. My lupus doctor was Dr. Um, Espinosa, who was my mom's doctor. He was pretty good, too. But um, that is kind of true. Lupus doctors won't know about the kidney, so you have to go see specifically that specialist. Um, I require everybody to go see that. And if you're in Dallas, I, re I require for you to go see Dr. Saxena at UT Southwestern. And I have Dr. Saeed, who's my lupus doctor. She's a woman, which I feel more comfortable with having a woman now. And she's at UT. And uh, my hematologist, everybody's at UT, but they conversate with each other. See, my doctors at home didn't really conversate with each other. So one was making a decision and the other one was changing something. And the other one had changed something back. And then they had changed something else. It was just everywhere. But Dr. Stephen Morris really saved my life. And Espinosa, I give it to you too. You have saved my life also. Um, here's another thing I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen. Please. Oh, yeah. One more thing. With this, uh, this second lupus flare, it was completely different from the first one. This second lupus flare actually caused a skin rash all over my body. 
and cause me to have, start having alopecia. So each, sometimes ladies, I will honestly tell you that each kidney failure can be different. But this is what I want to talk about also. Parents. Parents and women of lupus and parents that have kids with lupus. You are their voice. Okay? You are their voice. Don't let a doctor do something to your child or something to you without you being comfortable with it. Do you hear me? Don't make that decision because it might could be the wrong decision. It might cause a side effect. You might be allergic to something because honestly, people with lupus will be allergic to something one year and then the next year we're not allergic to, allergic to it no more. Or we can eat this and it won't do nothing to us and then the next day it'll do something to us. Mine, and I keep telling people 100% of the time, a lot of people's lupus flare up for different stuff. Mine flare up for, sl for uh, slack of sleep and stress. I'm a, I'm a very emotional person. I can admit to that. I care about, I used to care about, and I kind of still do care about my image. I cared about what people said about me, what people thought about me. And it caused me to be stressed out. And I, I want to tell all you lupus people that if somebody's going to stress you out, cut them off. If they're not benefiting you, cut them off. If they make you feel like you're a burden, cut them off. Because guess what? You are beautiful inside out. It doesn't matter what condition you have. It doesn't matter what you go through. Somebody, if they love you, they're going to work hard to help you get to back on track. It's not that, oh, um, he said I put my lupus first. Well, let me tell you something, baby. You, well, ain't you supposed to put yourself first? Ladies, come on now. Don't let no man tell you and dictate what you should do with your life. Because you will get stressed out and you have to deal with being unhappy. So, ladies, forever, if he tell you he got to leave, let him go. Let him go. He's not the one meant for you. Because if you're in love and you really love somebody, you're going to really sacrifice and risk. And whatever they go through is really not going to matter. They're going to be there for you regardless. Hey, babe. Mm -hmm. So, um, I was telling people on YouTube that when they have a spouse who doesn't appreciate them or sit there and say, oh, you put your lupus, it's always about lupus. Oh, man, it's, fuck you. Yeah, see, my husband said, fuck you. Because fuh he was there. He noticed what I went through. And then, and then in the beginning, being honest, you didn't think lupus was that serious. I didn't know what lupus was. And I didn't know how serious lupus can be. I, I didn't know the extent of lupus. Like, I didn't know how it ultimately uh, wait i don't know i didn't know how it could really affect somebody and at the end of the day lupus is different for everybody yes as you know and as you was able to meet different people and talk to a number of different people everybody has different symptoms and every and people treat di go differently pe with people people actually ask me how does my relationship and sex life go that shit's good okay. it's good like okay when i'm flared up my husband shut up when i flare up he doesn't mind not having sex what the hell are you trying to pump my coochie for? The hole won't even open. My coochie's so swollen. Yes, girl. The second kidney failure, and if you retain fluid and it gets worse and worse, you guys, your vagina will swell. Swell, huh, Howard? It's, it, my coochie swell bad. That bitch was fat. Yes. And then it was peeling, which may oh, even feel more worse, good. like a new baby's body. You know how kids, newborns peel? That's how I was feeling. And you got itching. You got itching? <laughs> And then, um, I lost all that weight in the blink of an eye. Um, but I still have issues sometimes peeing on my own. I still have issues, um, with the floor yeah, and with nausea. It's like an everyday thing with nausea. That's why I'm being honest, good girls and gentlemen. I smoke 24-7-365. We're in a society to where they believe that your image can get you far. But I believe, oh, ladies, if you use your brain, it can get you very far. When you're in a hospital, when I was in the hospital, my husband was cursing people out. He was like, now nah, I feel like you're playing with my wife. I feel like you're just putting this medicine in her like you and you're just testing it. it. She's not a you're tester. See how shit gonna work. Yeah, my it's, wife is not a test subject. They, they didn't know what the fuck they was doing. You know they ain't know what the fuck they was doing. When I realized y'all ain't know what the fuck y'all was doing... I lost my shit. And then what, what made me mad is that one of my old doctors told me, oh, uh, I don't know if the rituximab is working. And by this time, I was slim. Like, I went back to being small. That shit worked. I want to try cytoxin. No, I, I wish the fuck you would put two chemotherapies in my blood system. Yeah, stupid motherfucker. 
It's not about to work like that. You either gonna do another treatment of the one that you did, or, or you not doing nothing at all. And what happened? They ain't do shit. They showed it. It's been a year. And so my my chemo, yeah, my chemo is completely out of my system, you guys. And I haven't been to the hospital in like almost a year. It's usually flare-ups because of a flare-up, but the flare-up wouldn't be as bad. Like mm -hmm. if I overwork myself, that's when I have a flare-up. Don't get enough sleep. I don't get enough sleep. People could be very demanding. And I understand that having your own business, it can be very demanding. But I didn't know it would be that much demanded over me because I didn't look at it like that. I looked at it like I'm building my brand. I'm building my business. I'm trying to make it. So, ladies, I do want to have this talk with you one more time and tell you. If you have kids that have lupus, make those decisions for them. And if you feel that... You don't feel safe with your ch child doing that treatment, speak up for them. It doesn't matter if the doctor said this is what's best for them. If you feel that it's not best for your child, don't do it. Ladies, if you feel like it's not best for you, don't do it. Deny it. What they going to do? Be mad? That's all they could do. They just have to find other outlooks. Because sometimes, I could be honest, you guys, some of the outlooks that they don't look at actually work. So... When you get that good doctor that actually likes to try other things, but don't use you as a test subject, like, let them do their research. Make them do their research before they put this type of drug inside of you. And ladies, it's all about a change lifestyle also. Don't think that you could just take a medicine and get healthy. Nah, you gotta apply that shit in a certain time. Okay, so, love yourself. Nobody has to love you. Nobody has to sit there and love you, because let me tell you something. You, loving yourself, is gonna only get you farther in life. You don't need, you going, friends are going to come and go. Friends are going to come and go. Lovers are going to come and go. And if they're meant to stay, they're going to stay. Huh? What's up? What's up? What's up, nigga? You said something about something coming and go. I said dick going to come and go. Pussy going to come and go. Dick going to come and go. Pussy going to come and go. You wildin'. I'm always wildin'. Seven years of marriage. You see this shit? But yeah, um, any more questions that you guys got to ask me, hit me up. Uh, really hit me up through email because I will I'll check my email. And so the next video will be whatever you want. It could be experiences. It could be anything. It could be cooking because y'all know y'all like the way I cook. I'll show recipes. It depends. It's anything. But just let me know. I just wanted to, you know, give you guys an insight of how my kidney failures were. We might have similar situations and and one more thing through my second kidney failure i did have real bad muscle spasms so where i couldn't even pick myself up out the tub my husband would have to literally carry 180 pound fluid you know what i'm saying he's with you to that i'll usually be 125 so a spouse that you have like that that's a keeper but a spouse that's going to sit there and complain let him go because you think he complaining now and you don't have kidney failure or anything going on with you. Imagine when you go through that. Who you going to have? You ain't going to have him. You ain't going to have him. So prioritize, ladies. And prioritizing means that you put yourself first. Okay? Love you guys.